Rub up your engines! Arthur Flanagan says, I bought a used car two weeks ago. I got a 2005 Nissan. I had a car accident because the wheel fell off and I was almost killed. My three-year-old daughter in the car and my 64-year-old mother. Can you help me? Well, there's nothing I can do about it now, but I can help all you people out there watching this before you buy a used car. Have a mechanic like me check it out. I say this over and over again, but it's extremely important because you can't trust anybody selling a used car. As a mechanic, when I check out a car for somebody, I do my computer scan, I drive it around, I see how it rides. I don't know why your wheel fell off. Maybe it was something as stupid as they didn't tighten the lug nuts up, right? Well, you'd, I would feel when I'm road testing cars that there's something wrong. I'd jack up the suspension, I'd pull on the wheel, say it's loose, and say, hey, it needs to be tightened. I'd tighten it up, right? Or I'd say, oh, look, clunk a clunk goes the wheel when I jack it up. And I say, hey, the tie rod's ready to break and the wheel might fall off. You gotta pay a mechanic to check out a used car. Car. That's just how it goes. You can't trust anybody. If you remember that famous Jack Nicholson movie that made him famous, Five Easy Pieces, he meets these two women that just bought a used car and they got down the road and the same thing, the wheel fell off and it ended up in a ditch, right? You gotta check them out before you buy them. You can't trust people selling used cars. You have no idea what kind of shape those things are in. No, a new car, you don't have to worry about it because if they didn't build it right, hey, you can sue the manufacturer for not building it right, right? But you're buying a used car, it always says, as is, no warranty, right? On the other hand, if you want help for me. Get a lawyer. The wheel fell off two weeks after you bought it. That's a pre-existing condition. You know? So get a lawyer. See what he can do about that. Jamie says, how many miles driving a car is too much? All right. Well, <laughs> interesting question, right? Depends on the car or how you drive it. Now, realize one thing. Highway driving it's equivalent to 10% stop and go city driving. So if you drive 100,000 miles on a highway going 60 miles an hour, that's equivalent to 10,000 miles in stop and go traffic. So if you do a lot of driving on the highway, you can often get a million miles in a good car like a Toyota or a Honda. I've seen them. And I've seen them because those are driven on the highway all the time, right? In terms of just, say, per day driving, it just depends on how you're driving. If you just stop and go traffic, the car's going to wear out faster. That's just the way that it goes. You put 100,000 miles of all stop and go driving, a lot of cars will be pretty worn out by then. City streets are full of holes. You're stopping, going. Cars shift more. They're not just going in top gear in the highway. They're shifting through all the years up and down. Everything wears out faster, right? And of course, a lot of it, what is too many miles? Depends on the vehicle you buy. I've seen... Fiat's, Chrysler's, blow up engines at 60,000 miles, right? Toyota engines might go three, four, five hundred thousand miles or more. It all depends a lot on the vehicle you're buying. Some can take it, some can't take it. Take the old Crown Victorious. Ford sold, Panther bodies, full frame. Not the greatest gas mileage, but on a highway you might have gotten 21, 22 miles ago. And those things can run forever. The big V8 engine just purring along. And of course, if you've got a smaller engine with a turbocharger, it won't go as many miles because it will wear out faster. The simpler the vehicle you have, generally the longer it's going to last, if it's quality made. Rocker says, I got a delay in my transmission. I got a four second delay in my automatic transmission when I shifted to drive. 2016 Mazda 6. I replaced the valve body, changed the transmission fluid. The dealers didn't find anything and they said I'd change the whole training. What should I do? You only got 65,000 miles on it. It should last longer than that. Two, saying you need a new transmission just because there's a delay. A lot of times they get older they will do that. Now you change the fluid and stuff. There's really nothing else you can do about that. As long as it goes. Personally, if I were you, I would drive it. I've had customers with Mazdas that did that. Four years later, they still did that. And they still drove down the road okay. Don't spend money you don't have to. If it goes okay otherwise, live with it. I wouldn't even do anything about it. I've got many customers that would do that. And here's a trick you might find. Start it up and park right. Then put it in reverse first. And then put it in drive. A lot of times you do that and they won't delay. It turns the reverse and then goes to drive and it won't delay. But if it still does delay and it still runs, hey, just keep driving it. And if you want a second opinion, find a Mazda expert mechanic who's got a Mazda dealer scan tool. Let them check it out. And they might find out maybe you got a weak solenoid or something that you could replace. You never know. But there's no way I'd replace the whole transmission with a vehicle that's got 65,000 miles on it. And it should not have worn out that fast. Even with a Mazda, it shouldn't wear out that fast. Like I say, I've had customers with Mazdas for five years. They drove them that way. They still went down the road. They said, the heck with it. I just live with it. Rick Neff says, my radio and app are running my battery down. 
down. I got an 06 Cadillac CTS. I found the drain was in the radio. I couldn't find a factory radio, so I bought one from eBay. So it's used. And it still drains the battery. I don't mind paying for BCM or ESAM, but if it doesn't fix it, then I'd waste money. Can you give me any assistance to the situation without an expensive program like a Tech 2? Thanks. You got the wrong vehicle, baby. You got a Cadillac CTS. You have to have a Tech 2 if you're going to work on those systems. That's how complicated they are. You just can't. I mean, if I were you, what do you care about that stupid factory radio anyway? It's an old car. You could put an Android in there and get better sound anyway. It cost 150 bucks for the whole thing. You're trying to fix an overly complex system that is broken down. Out. And the only way you can work on those stupid complex infotainment systems in those Cadillacs, you got to have a tech too. If you don't, forget it. You're never going to figure out what's wrong. No mechanic that's got a brain would even touch it without one of those. They'd say, look, all these things are interactive. Plus, to top it all off, you bought a radio from eBay. Hey, it may have the same problem that your radio had in the first place. You don't buy high tech stuff on eBay. You never know where it's coming from, who built it. And with Cadillacs, those things break all the time. So you probably buy bought a broken one. The only way you're going to be able to tell is you're going to have to find a guy with a Tac 2. They're too complex and without that machine you can't work on them. Nick123 says, my Honda power steering is whining after I had the pump and hose replaced. Got 2010 Civic. Power steering pump and high pressure hose were replaced because they were leaking. Now it whines. It steers, but why is it whining? I can tell you why it's whining. It's whining because you got a crappy pump. Now it can work perfectly fine. Most of the time people buy, in quotes, remanufactured power steering pumps. I no longer use them because they often make a noise. I've had that happen and I tell the customer, you bought the pump, take it back. They take it back and they say, does it work? I say, hey, it works, but it makes a noise. They say, we guarantee it works. We don't guarantee it doesn't make any noise. Those things put out 1500 PSI pressure and higher. A lot of times they'll make noise. If they rebuilt, they don't rebuild them right and they make a noise, right? Your old one didn't make a noise, it just leaked. Now you got a system that isn't leaking, it's making a noise because it's a crappy pump. Now, let's say you didn't get a rebuilt one, but you bought a brand new Chinese copy, same thing. They often make crappy copies and they whine. Now, if it works, ah, my advice would be to live with it unless, uh, you know, a mechanic's going to stay behind it and try another one. Change a power steering pump, you're better off getting a brand new OEM one, not getting a rebuilt one. The rebuilt ones cost a fraction. They are cheap, yes, but they're often cheaply done and they make noise. So, I mean, I've had some customers, about three or four of them, and they kept whining and whining and whining. I finally said, look, why don't you just go to a junkyard and buy a used one? And they did, and then the noise went away because the used one was still working. Okay. This lady says, I got an 06 Chevy Cobalt with tons of miles. I use regular gas. I was told I should use a higher grade. Is it true? I haven't had any issue. No, don't waste your money. That's a Chevy Cobalt. It's made to run on regular gas. You don't want to waste your money putting high test gas in that thing. It's stupid. If you've got a crapper car that hasn't been maintained and the engine builds up with carbon inside, those are the ones that, if you want, you could run at a higher octane gas because the carbon takes up so much space, it increases the combustion pressure. Realize the higher test gas, it can take more pressure before it ignites. In that case, you could, but I mean, you'd better off cleaning the carbon out, then you would be paying a lot of extra for gas. Don't waste your money. The guy's telling you foolish advice. Well, if you saw my video on Turo Rental, well, here's another reason not to rent from them. <laughs> One woman rented a Turo, right? And she went back to get her car. It was gone. She says, where's my car? Oh, well, you don't know where your car is, right? So she contacts the police and they said, well, it was stolen. But then they find out it wasn't stolen, it was repossessed because whoever owned the Turo car didn't pay and it was repoed. Well, it was repoed with their son's diabetes medicine and stuff in it, I guess. And she was mad as a hornet. I don't blame her, you know? Realize, you rent a Turo, right? You're renting somebody else's car. Somebody else owns it. Who knows if they have insurance on it, if they've taken care of it. Who has any idea? Yeah, nobody does. In my case, they were supposed to bring me a Tesla so I could film a video. And the day I was supposed to get it, an hour after it was supposed to be here at nine in the morning, I get a text that says I'm not bringing it. <laughs> So I said, this Turo stuff with a bunch of nonsense. And of course, the people that were using it, not the people who are renting it, but the people who actually provide the cars that you rent through the Turo app. I've met a lot of these people and they said, ah, oh, we stopped using them because they took too big of a cut and we hardly made any money. Turo, maybe a stupid idea if you're going to depend on something. Can you imagine? You come to your car, your car's gone because it was repoed because whoever owned it didn't pay on it. There's so many things that can go wrong when you're renting a car from somebody privately through a third party. It would make your head spin.
been. Just think, what if they didn't have insurance, even though they told the company they did, and something happened, you're going to be liable for it because you were driving the car. Believe me, it's not a smart idea to rent from these companies like Toro. It's a stupid idea. It's a great idea for the Toro company. Hey, we'll let people rent cars to us. We don't have to buy any cars. We don't have a fleet, just like Uber. Uber doesn't own any cars. Well, at least when they started, they didn't. They basically have other people drive their own cars, and then Uber gets the cut. Toro's the same way, only it's even dumber. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.